What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 74 of Autodesk Fusion. Today, what we're working on is this gear system. Now, there's lots of ways to do this wrong, and hopefully I figure out every way to do it wrong. That way, when we're doing it right, it is the easiest way to do it. Originally, I was making these gears with contact sets. However, I found motion links to be so much easier. So let's go ahead and look at this. So if I were to rotate this time one time around, we notice that my other gears act accordingly in where they want them to be. So if I were to rotate this, you know, one time around, we can see that the my 40 tooth gear doesn't go one full revolution. It kind of goes the appropriate amount it should go. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build our gears first. So I'm gonna click on new design, and I'm just gonna draw a circle, it's a quarter inch for my inside diameter, and then let's do something else for outside. So let's do one inch for that outside diameter. All right, actually let's go a little bit bigger. Let's go 1.5 inches. All right, now what I'm gonna do then is I'm just gonna draw a gear tooth. Unless you have a specific one that you're shooting for, you can kind of just eyeball it because everything is going to be based off us doing specific things where as long as we're creating a gear system we don't need to have specific number of things in mind. So we're shooting for a random triangle tooth gear and from here we should be good to, to go on a couple things. If I trim this bottom piece out you can see it's still light blue overall so I'm good to extrude it. What I'm going to do now, oh I had escape on accident go back in that sketch and let's now do a circular command so circular pattern click on the two points of our tooth the center point is going to be the center of that circle and it's really important you do this make sure you do this right one we need to figure out how many tooth teeth are going to be in our gear and then the second thing we have to worry about is our I call these triangles of death so you do a circular pattern and the geometry overlaps itself, you get these hidden triangles and that creates a really, really, really big problem when you go to extrude. So I'm going to do as many as I can to make sure that these triangles are not overlapping. And let's do 45. Click OK and that looks good. So we're going to hit finish sketch, we're going to highlight everything, E for extrude, deselect that center hole, and make this as a new component. Now very 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 important make sure you write down how many teeth are involved that way you do not have to worry about remembering that downstream. This will be really important when you're making your motion links. So I'm gonna click on new sketch. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna make a very similar gear, but this time we're going to do a diameter of, we did 1.5, let's do two inches. All right, to keep this same geometry, I'm gonna hit P for project, select the two pieces of geometry for one tooth and then click OK. I'm going to go ahead now and deselect my 45 tooth gear that way when I go to move this geometry M for move it's not in my way and I'm going to slightly move it out of the way. I don't want it to overlap yet because I'm going to do a couple of things. We're going to go ahead and throw in the dimensions for this uh, tooth that way when I start to constrain it to the circle nothing stretches on me so let's do the dimension of that just hit enter dimension of this just hit enter and then do the dimension between the two which will get your angle and just hit enter okay now what I'm going to do is now do the coinciding constraint I want the end of this line to be on the end of that circle the end of this line to be on that circle. So what this does is it forces your 
tooth to stay the same shape, but fit on that circle the best it can. We know everything's good now because this is lightly shaded blue, and I'm good now to do my circular pattern. So create circular pattern, click on these two teeth, center point's gonna be in the middle, and let's do 50. Can we get away with 55? So now I'm gonna zoom in and making sure that this is not overlapping again. Can I get away with 60? Let's do 65. Nope, too much. I'm gonna go ahead and do an odd number of teeth. That's not typical for a gear system. That way, hopefully, I can show you how the motion link thing just makes your job beautiful. All right, click OK. And there we go. We now know that the whole system here is good to extrude. So I'm going to hit Finish Sketch, highlight everything, E for Extrude, deselect that center piece, and I'm going to extrude four because I did the other one backwards, half an inch. Click on New Component, click OK. And we're looking all right. Now that last one is 65 teeth. Or sorry, 61 teeth. All right. This is looking okay. Now here's what we're gonna do, is we're gonna go ahead and line up the, these to be uh, alongside each other and kind of smushed up the best we can. There's a couple different ways to do it. I found this one way to be most helpful, is line up the best you can but enable contact sets for now. And we're gonna enable all contact sets. Now this just allows me to take these two gears and line them up where we need them to be. Kind of push them around. And then capture that position. Right click, disable contact sets. We now know that these two um, gears are as about as smushed together as they're gonna be, and we can now throw in our axles. So let's create a sketch. Let's do a circle here, and circle, let's, uh, let's not let me, I'm gonna do project. It wouldn't automatically throw it in where I wanted it to go, so I just did a project. Hit finish sketch. Now what you'll be able to do is make our two axle pieces. The reason we have to make the axles is because there has to be something that is not going to move in our system, and that is going to be our axles. So I made the two circles where the gears were, and then extruded, called them a new component, called these axles, and we're good to go. All right, now we're gonna go to right click on axles, we're gonna ground them. We do not want them to move. Now we're ready for our joints. So we're gonna do J for joint. Our axles disappear and that's okay because you actually can't do a joint command as the first component to something that's grounded. So I'm gonna ground, or sorry, the join the one gear to the face of one axle. It's gonna be a revolute command. It might be a rigid command. It'll be whatever you used last. Is it spinning the right direction? We're looking good. Click OK. J for joint. We're gonna join the face of this to the face of that axle. Is it spinning the correct way? Yes, we're looking good. All right, now we gotta do the hard part. Here's not the hard part. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to align these in such a way where they look like they're matched up correctly. And then I'm gonna capture that position. All right, here's the, where's the, the new part? Brand new stuff, motion links, how do we do them? We're gonna click on motion link, so it's under the assembly tab, motion link. Then we're gonna click on the two joints that are related. Now, they're both rotating at the same rate, but because these are different size gears. They're not gonna rotate at the same rate. Here's the, here's the cheap way out. 
and not have them do any math. So for that angle, we're going to do 61 degrees. For the other one, we're going to do 45. And reverse. Now what should happen is, oh, I did those backward, didn't I? So let's go right and let's edit those. Let's edit that joint. Edit feature. I got those backwards. 45, 61, click OK. Now, yeah, there we go. Sorry, I got them backwards. By putting in the number of teeth for the opposite joint, or for that opposite revolute, you're actually already putting in the gear ratio. So by putting in the number of teeth, things just tend to work out well and you're not have to worry about gear ratios or the math behind any of those. We're getting them to constrain the way they approximately should. Now, here's what I'm gonna to try to show you. If I were to, let's go ahead and turn on contact sets, so enable all contact sets. If I were to try to spin this, I now can't. And that's just because there's some small thing in the way to making this physically impossible. So by not using contact sets, we can get away with making designs that may not be 100% perfect, but we can make a mock-up or a prototype and then um, kind of worry about some of those more specifics downstream. Alrighty guys, there we go. We have made a gear system using motion links uh, and being able to lend them to act appropriately without using contact sets, which I find to be a whole lot easier because if we use contact sets, they tend to skip out or if you don't have a super powerful computer and a lot of that computation has to be doing, it's gonna freeze up on you. But by doing motion links, we ignore the physical part of it and we're saying theoretically, what should it do? And theoretically, this is what it should do. And so when I animate a model, one, rot one, run, one rotates one way, the other one rotates the other at the rates that they're supposed to. All right, guys, that's going to be it. If you have any questions, let me know. Until then, I will see you on the next video.